moving on to the second sticky note now let's talk about toronto uh there's uh, we have a lot of great charts in this episode about toronto about calgary about edmonton and we're kind of comparing what's going on in the gta toronto market and what's going on in the alberta calgary edmonton market uh so let's go through it this uh toronto is uh let's just say suffering a little bit how's that is that a good way to put it <laughs> yeah, you know, something uh, Toronto is struggling, uh, particularly, you know, in the condo market. Let's, you know, call it for what it is. And there's a couple charts that really show that. And uh, the condo market is just getting beat up right now. And, you know, ultimately, there's a supply issue. There's a closing on completions issue. There's just a lot of things going on in that marketplace. And by the way, rents are coming down. There's so much on the market right now. Rents in the condo market in Toronto in some uh, buildings in Toronto have come, come off quite a lot. And so these are the, you know, the issues that we're dealing with. And I think from an investor's point of view, you know, within the rain community, at least JG, you know, we've always made it really clear is that that game is a, is a, is a game you can play if you really know what you're doing and, or you've got a great, realtor behind you. Now, the problem is, is that wasn't the case. A lot of this, we have said many times, not investors, these are speculators that, you know, blew up that whole condo market. And, you know, here we are today. Well, here's that chart, Patrick, you were talking about, which is uh, months of inventory. Right now, the months of inventory are over five months, about five and a half months of inventory. And this is the highest since the great financial uh, crisis of 2008 where there was six and a half months. So that's kind of where we're at. Now there's one other time in 2012 where we got to four and a half. Uh, but, but other than that, Patrick, this is in fact the highest, uh, uh, you know, in terms of inventory, months of inventory that we've had in the condo market. And we're seeing this kind of reverberate uh, throughout, uh, as you said, throughout the market. And, uh, and a lot of people who speculated years ago, by the way, the deals that are closing now in 2023, this is speculation from 2018, 2019, Patrick. This isn't people that speculated a year or two ago. These projects are three, four, five years down the road. So these are, these are decisions that people made in 2018 that are coming home to roost today. And that's important for investors watching this show to realize because the decisions you're making today in the condo market, if you're buying pre-built, those decisions are going to come to roost in 2028. So you got to look that far out in the condo market, and that's not easy to do. No, it's not. And this goes back to what we just talked about with the Bank of Canada. You know, this was, you know, how many investors were even, even buying three years ago when rates were lower? And then again, you know, Tiff Macklem, you know, governor of Bank of Canada, looks into the camera and goes, rates will stay low for a very, very long time. So if you're making decisions based on that, which I think many did, uh, you basically got sucker punch. And this is where the condo market uh, was hot. We needed and, and it was necessary. There was a lot of building going on. There was a lot of rental demand. Uh, there was a lot of demand overall. And, you know, then the game changed. And so, you know, what can you say about that? Speaking of uh, a building, Patrick, here's a great chart that shows uh, housing starts specifically in Toronto. You can see what I find fascinating about this chart, two things, is uh, how much rentals are up. Rentals are up significantly uh, and have continued to power through. Uh, single family is actually turned negative now. And, and of course, this is Toronto. We have to understand, Patrick, this is normal. I, I think this is a natural progression of the Toronto market. You just need density. You're not going to build single family homes in Toronto. There's no, you, you, there's no place to put them. You have to build either condos or rentals because there's just no place for the single family. And I think if you compare this chart and we'll compare it to the Alberta chart and what's happening in Calgary, very, very different. We're out in Calgary. There's a whole lot more land mass. And this chart's completely different in Calgary because you do have room for those single families. Well, and this is where the mistakes are being made in Calgary. We'll get to that in a minute. But ultimately, to your point, JG, Toronto is Toronto. I mean, it's a whole ecosystem and a whole environment on its own. And within that, there's a lot of micro uh, markets. So all to say this is Toronto is a very standalone kind of look and rental market is what we need. But having said that, there's still a lot of supply that's now into the market. And by the way, I think the condo supply, I think you're going to see that months on uh, market, a month or uh, 
months of inventory. Months of inventory. I think you're going to see it. We're going into you know December, January, February, which are historically quieter months. I mean, people get interested, but I think you're going to see that months of inventory uh, go higher. Is this a Patrick prediction right here, right now? Is this a Patrick prediction that months of inventory is going up? It's currently up five point five. Patrick, where are you? Where are you putting it? Give me a number. Give me a number. Are you going? Well, right I, yeah, I think I think we're going to break six. I think we're going to uh, break six months. I think we will. Break given six the time of year. All right, breaking six months. Patrick prediction. You've heard it here first, folks. Yeah, we're breaking in. We're breaking <laughs> six months of inventory on the condo market in Toronto. Mark your calendars. We're going to revisit this January, February this year, and we'll see where it's at. Um, Patrick, a couple other things on the Toronto market. Sales to new listing ratio, which is what determines whether or not we're in a buyer's market, a balanced market, or a seller's market. I mean, we went from a rip-roaring seller's market, Patrick, and we have went so fast into a buyer's market. It's absolutely crazy. But I want to remind people, because 40% uh, or less is a buyer's market, 60% or more is a seller's market, and anything in between is a balanced market. Uh, check this out, though, Patrick. We've been in a seller's market for quite some time. But I do want to remind people, look how much it's gone up and down uh, since 2021. You went into a seller's market. Then you went into a buyer's market. Then you went back into a seller's market. And now you're back into a buyer's market. So just want everyone to take a breath here, Patrick. People just freak out. And real estate is a long-term play. And this is something that will work its work its way through the system. Uh, but it's an emotional time right now for people, Patrick. There's a lot of freaking out going on. Well, we're ho I hope that people see that, you know, we keep looking at the data around it. And, you know, we have to keep looking at the information, not from a house buyer, a home buyer, but as an investor. So this buyer's market, JG, although this is about Toronto, you and I know because we spend so much time with DI Vault and we're looking at the technicals of many cities in Ontario, uh, we start to realize that this buyer's market in other centers where there is great opportunities. And so if you're an investor, this is exactly the time that you should be looking for deals. Uh, so scary, I get it, and but it's it's and it may even feel counterintuitive. But the reality of it is, is people, why are we chasing deals in the highest market? You know, we get that's the energy, that's the emotion, right? So if we come back now, this is some great opportunities. And JG, I know that you've had the opportunity to get a couple of great deals done because of it. Well, you're absolutely right, Patrick. And in fact, even as even as recent as today. You know, I had someone in, in my office uh, talking about this fantastic deal where he was able to pick up a great mixed use building that had some commercial, had some residential. He picked this building up for probably 10% under market. He figures he got a 10% discount on it. Plus the seller was willing to offer a 65% VTB on the property at a below market interest rate. And I'm thinking, man, you couldn't, you would have, you would have, died and went to heaven if you got that deal done 18 months ago today those deals are out there everywhere and everybody's sitting on the sidelines crying in their soup it's not time to be crying in your soup it's time to be out there doing deals 100 if you like what you learned here go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses if you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.